You're at Myford Lathe and uh, one of the things I'd had a long trouble with was the, the backlash on the uh, on the speed 10 on the cross slide. Now um, after much deliberation I quite like the idea of keeping it looking the same. I did think about changing this bracket. Um, if you've ever worked with these what I found out is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's a cast part and there are lots of occlusions in there and um, I clocked it up and just checked it for def deflection and it's it's around about 0 0.2 of a millimeter which isn't which isn't a great amount over that sort of distance in terms of the distance it's going to change in our accuracy of of cut so I kind of stuck with that and uh, I, I like the look anyway even though it needed um, a, a bit of tidying up now the um, the issue with the backlash was uh, this normally just bolts up through and there's a there's a washer in there. I'll show you the. This is the sort of condition and things that you get when you you buy these things from um, the the supplier. See that uh, that's the surface where the screws go in, and this is the the back surface. Although I've been using that, you can see that there is a little bit of um, a little bit of wear on that, but the surface isn't actually flush. Um, and if you look at this one as well, you think you can see that it is actually dished. Now, I've experimented with brass washers, phosphor bronze washers, and um, whale or tufnel in the area as a fiber washer. And uh, there's always been backlash and you always adjust it up. And uh, I think the problem with it is, is um, when you go up to tighten up on two metal surfaces, you're gonna go through a very, very steep curve of going from being slack with a bit of play in it to very very tight and one of the things I didn't like was the um, the friction feel of that so I've uh, been through and set up the the cross slide um, with the DTA on the bed and adjusted all of the um, all of the screws on the jib strip so that there's not um, any play in there I mean I was allowing um, there's 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 always deflection in the metal and when you move the part it, it moves a little bit but uh, it's a case of finding out where that point is and just allowing a small degree of play so all I went through is I went through the the jizz strip and adjusted these at a single point all the way along the bed as I I moved along and now that's that's tight with no play along all the way across and it's not tight as in no play but not tight as in friction because I could just push that across with my finger now and there is no no perceivable play from one one end to the the other allowing for um, 0 0.01 of a millimeter of of actual slot when I set the the screws themselves if you actually measure or DTI in on this side to determine the play um, here it gives you the advantage of the fact that you're at a 60 degree angle so you're going to see more play or more movement here than you would in the the up and down plane i think i'm right about that or no and i'm saying about it i'm i'm not so sure anyhow back to this this part um this is what you get and as i've explained it's it's not fantastic and getting rid of the backlash is a, is a problem i know people use spring washers and all sorts of things but you can end up putting a lot of uh, friction and wear on the on the part so this is my uh, prototype part. Um, what I did was to mount um, a spare one of these on a face plate um, using this surface here. So it sat on the lathe a little bit like that. And um, I bored out all the bits in the middle. All of these bits that I wasn't really happy with. And I made an insert. Now you can see that the um, we've got the insert there. Excuse the lathe, I'm still doing some work on this. Inside there, you can actually see the the point where I've actually pinned it. So I put the bearing in and actually pin it here and here. Even though that is a press fit, I always like the the confidence of having some some metal in the way. And this is um, silver steel I've used. Um, the bush is. Um, the same front to back you can see I've got um, a three-quarter inch uh, or 750 thou 
bearing pressed in there and um it's uh, zero um a uh, five point five five millimeters thickness which is an imperial size but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um these are the sort of bearings I'm I'm using. I could have gone for seal bearings but um as it was I got some some open frame ones. These these are just ones I bought at a trade show that were second hand and I've used them just to just to test the uh test the process out. So that's a quarter on the inside or oh, 250 thou 750 on the outside and five and a half mil thick. So I'll pick that up in a minute. When you can see in there I've actually got a, a lip that I've um I've machined in where the bearing will go in and uh, and and rest. Now I'll just um just find a bearing. Um hopefully that should uh should drop in there. You can see that's, that that bearing's got in and that's flush now. Um, on the other side, the other bearing goes in, does the same. The existing shaft goes through here and then you can actually tighten up on the bearings because the more side thrust you put on these, it's a much, much, much gentler curve. So you can get this to a point where it is actually nipped up on the bearings and there is no play. I mean, as soon as I move that backwards and forwards, there is no perceptible play and if I was to DTI that, we would actually see that that would move. So there's no play in there. So I'm, I'm really happy with this as well as the other modification I I did on this was um, adjusting the friction rate on this by skimming off um, a small amount on the uh, the inner bush, just so that the Belafran washer would allow me to set this without losing my adjustment. So. This was part of the modification. I've actually sprayed this with um, aluminium um, primer, etch primer, and then uh, I used black engine paint on the top, black engine enamel, just to give it this this finish and masking off the bits here, where I've actually um, scribed back and polished and graved, or say graved with the scriber, the uh, the index line there. So. Uh, I can see what I'm doing. One of the other things I like about this now is the fact that the this part generally runs true where there was a mutation action before. You can see where the, the bearing fits in there in the in the back with the grease. Um, there's the thrust bearing tied up against that. Inside here there's a thrust washer and one of the other things that I like to do is to put in a spacer here so that if this hand wheel goes straight up against there, there's no way that you can get in a spanner, a spanner to adjust it or tighten it. So with that, I can do this now. Um, I think that's probably an eighth, an eighth thickness. So this is three eighths by a quarter hole and an eighth thick, and that's it. Behind there, there's a a phosphor bronze washer even though it probably doesn't need to be that because it's clamped between the inner race face and this wheel which will have no relative movement between them so I could have used anything but um, as I was in a, a phosphor bronze mood and uh, it it kind of took me I like machining it um, I decided to go with uh, to go with that so that's the that's the cross slide improvement um, I have seen other people do this and they've used thrust bearings in here now you can have a thrust bearing on the inside so when you tighten up that's fine but if you're boring or doing an internal you're coming back this way so I kind of um denied about that I mean the force on this is relatively light and I'm not going to be taking crazy cuts on this so uh, I think the load on these bearings would be relatively light but I did go for um, deep groove bearings um, they weren't a lot of money and the, the change it's made to the lathe and the leather precision I can get now is uh, is well it's, it's just beyond beyond compare I can take skim cuts and um, very very thin cuts so you're looking at getting to the point where you're machining down to um, 
sub 100s so you can take very very fine cuts although the finish does tend to vary a little bit because I've still got to do the work on the the top slide modification which is uh, another project for uh, another day